first I was like, then I was like, and then I was like, a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Refreshingly creative, surprisingly funny yet endearing, great world building and perfect pacing. It's got a lot of flavor from Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's also reminiscent of an episode of Star Trek in more ways than one. Pay close attention for the subtleties of that. All around solid fun that creates genuine excitement for the future of the MCU, at least for me. And if you enjoy hearing about Marvel movies, hit like on this video. Honestly, I had no expectations going into this one. I thought the first one was just okay at best, and the marketing for the sequel was iffy while being heavily tied to multiple TV shows to fully understand. One of which I finally finished right before watching this, and the effects in the trailers were kind of uh, worrisome. I just wasn't excited at all. But the Marvels has washed away most of my worries about Marvel. They seem to have refocused and are ready to blow all of our minds again with what they have in store for the multiverse saga. I think Mia DaCosta was the right choice for this. I haven't seen any of her other work, but she did a great job. The way she's able to not only replicate the juicy style of the Miss Marvel show, but also interject her own sense of energy into the camera, particularly into the frenetic and dynamic action sequences, is impressive. I was all in and I thought they balanced choreography and clever editing really seamlessly with wide angle shots. It's just a pretty movie to watch flow through, especially in the action. Speaking of, the visual effects in my opinion were vastly improved from the trailers. There's still noticeable moments and occasional iffy green screen shot or bad, bad volume shot, or what appears to be anyway, but they're mostly fine to solid throughout. Credit where credit is due, those VFX guys deserve it for working in such tight deadlines and being so overworked lately. I sometimes have issues with Brie Larson's performance here and there, but I do think here, I understand what she's going for and upon reflection, see how she was playing Carol all along. She's a tough as nail soldier doing the best she can to help everyone in the cracks in both her memories and emotions often leave nothing but stoicism. I think Larson does this effectively, even if the dialogue from the script doesn't always help her sell it as much as it should do to how it's written. I've read reports she's rumored to be done with the role or once out, but I think she found herself here even more than before and her banter with the others is lovely. I do wish they had delved much deeper into her character arc as there's many interesting ideas that sort of get glossed over for the sake of the runtime. That may help the pacing, but I wouldn't have minded a few more minutes to really sit with the reveals or story decisions revolving around her that just aren't as impactful as they could be because we have to move past it for the sake of time. There's a big opportunity for conflict in the team I thought would come up naturally, but it's not addressed at all. And I thought Tiana Paris, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, was a much lighter presence than she was on WandaVision, where she was much more serious. Here, it's almost as if her character healed and is able to be less rigid while still being quite serious when she needs to be. It's the growth that was good to see and she clearly has fun with the opportunity to do more hero. It doesn't always work for Monica with her character given how she was portrayed originally, but the attempt is noted. There's lots of surprises in store that I can't wait to talk about more with her. I find her powers pretty fascinating. But Aman Vellani, hope I'm pronouncing that right, absolutely steals the show. As she did in her own series, she captures the wonder and magic of that youthful energy not seen since Tom Holland debuted in Civil War. Everything she says and does is believable, right down to the codename joke completely working here when similar ones in films have it at all. And she even gets to somewhat parody other characters and scenes within the MCU to fantastic effect. I laughed out loud. Her enthusiasm for the material is apparent. It shines through her performance and she radiates an infectious sense of joy. What wonderful casting. I can't wait to see what else she does. And I will say again, there's a pretty strong reliance on knowledge of the TV shows. If you want backstory on Monica Rambo or Kamala's powers, you must watch those, especially Miss Marvel. You can get by, but you wouldn't enjoy it as much. There's a pretty big connection to the other show too. Again, you don't have to watch them to understand everything going on here, but it really helps. And that's pretty much how it was designed. Now I get the argument that you shouldn't have to see three shows to enjoy a sequel, but Marvel has long been clear about this and their game plan. And I get it's hard to keep up, even I'm having trouble there which is why I just finished Miss Marvel right before watching this. With Marvel nowadays, it's kind of like, get with the program. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. They did a good job with this one as compared to something like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness where you don't have to have the knowledge to really understand all the motivations going on. But if you have, you'll enjoy it more. 
I thought the plot was surprisingly affecting in its approach with an understandable villain. It's a scary plan that opens up the world tremendously to interesting new ideas, as it relates to this phase. I hope we see even more of the Kree explored there and the space side of things further. I loved what they did with them on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's a lot of potential there I feel like is untapped. However, the villain herself is effectively played by, I think it's pronounced Zawe Ashton, as Darben. But while there's something there, it's a bit surface level since the film can't commit the time to really fleshing out her motivations beyond surface level. It feels like a classical Marvel villain problem, but in the vein of them simply being forgettable with a decent performance. And I was kind of weirdly okay with that. Probably because the core trio worked so well together, all of that made me think of an early, maybe phase one to phase two Marvel film. When they banter in this, and they have tender moments where they do a fun montage or keep some serious tale on multiple scenes, it's just a blast. It feels like characters who genuinely want to be around each other. I love that chemistry. I don't understand how Kamala knows how to fight so well, considering she's like, 16, 17, something like that, 18 maybe. I thought that in the show too. But I will say, while I buy their journeys just enough, the feels are only barely there. It's lacking the huge punch of emotion to really sell some of the themes, relationships, and plot revelations. And I think that's due to the runtime. So there are some effective moments where you may feel something, but not much. So while that pacing is nice, it comes at the cost of not being more fleshed out or feeling the feels. And that ending did surprise me too, which was both fun, hilarious, and exciting, and consequential. Happens a little fast though, but unfortunately due to leaks, my Twitter thread spoiled the credit scene for me the other day, which makes me mad. I just opened the app and it was there. What's nonetheless super unexpected for me, but also kind of fits in what they're going for, it teases a bright future for the MCU. Absolutely cannot wait to see what Kevin Feige is cooking. Look, I enjoyed this far more than I expected to. I laughed a ton of mostly good humor. That is some really genuinely funny and unique ideas for jokes and creative set pieces beyond just action. Several moments in the film, I was re reminded of classic Star Trek scenarios and episodes. And I don't want to spoil anything, but oh man, I had so much fun. And that may seem like the most generic thing to say about a comic book movie that everyone expected to be bad and where reviews are only being released two days before, but give this one a chance. I really enjoyed it. I'm hoping to do a spoiler video coming soon. Make up your own minds. I give The Marvels four out of five stars. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, always look for the good.